Hey, hi, my friends on uh, YouTube. So this is it. This is day, um, gosh, day 20 of the 10,000 Swing Challenge. Uh, that means that uh, starting tomorrow, I'm going to start doing Pat Flynn's 300 Swings. Um, once again, I come to you from my office. Uh, and I'm, it's a very exciting day to be an American. That's uh, the inauguration day. As soon as I find them, oh, here it is. Right, so uh, yesterday I did my goal of uh, 10 sets of 50 swings, 500 swings total. Uh, I probably won't be doing that today because I'm gonna kind of skate through it. Uh, you know, the highlights of doing the 10,000 swing challenge are, uh, yeah, I mean, on, on paper, my body weight came down. The, the biggest mistake I made in the last couple of days is that, uh, I mean, <laughs> Noki, I had some Noki the other day. We ate spaghetti last night, it was excellent. Uh, I had a sloppy Joe. I had the other a couple nights ago I had pizza. It's odd to say that because uh, generally, I generally don't eat pastas and I don't eat sloppy Joes and pizza. But uh, I think when you do this challenge, you you accidentally uh, cheat a little bit. So last day, looking forward to it. I haven't done a single swing yet. This morning, my first swing will be, uh, well, here we go, let's do it. And as a reminder, uh, because it is my office, I got that really expensive floor, so I can't, I can't be dropping kettlebells on it. Easy. That was easy. So that is kind of a fun to watch my tolerance build up over the 20 days. You're supposed to take days off doing it, but uh, I don't. Uh, so when people, somebody asks, what's the purpose of it? There is no purpose to a challenge. I think, in fact, I think people miss the point. Uh, when you do a challenge of any kind. Uh, hey, thank you, Hagar. Good to see you. Uh, good morning. Uh, when you do a challenge, you're not, uh, yeah, there's physical changes, but it's mostly up here. Uh, going for a hundred. Uh, Café Corazon. I don't, I don't know what you mean by going, going for a hundred. No, I'm going for, 10,000, so I don't know how 100 is not, 100 is less than 10,000, am I right on that? I was never good at math, I sat next to a really cute girl in math class, so I never really focused. Oh, it's been, uh, so what I was about to say is that, so I'm doing this a little different, uh, I'm doing the, uh, I'm doing 20 straight days of 500 swings a day versus doing over, say, a four-week period, which I normally do and take two days off a week. The reason I want to do that is because, I, like I said before, I have this big donation coming up next week. Oh, thank you, Sean. Uh, Sean says I'm a beast, which, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think it's very mammalist for you to say that. Uh, my lizard friends would be hurt. Um, well, um, I'm going to have to crank it up pretty quickly. i got people showing up at 9.30 to train with me. Today's workout is one of my favorites. Today's the day 
where I do about 100 overhead presses and I do uh, maybe up to about a two mile heavy hand ankle weight walk. So I, I do about almost half a mile, you know, 800, 800 uh, uh, meter uh, heavy hand ankle weight. Then I do a, a whole bunch of presses and I just keep doing that two, two loop press, two loop press, two loop press. Uh, during my first ever morning workout, good Kathy Corzon. I still don't know what you mean by 100, okay? So let's do this. I didn't, I didn't think I'd be able to do that this morning. Good. Like I said, yesterday was an amazing day. 10 sets of 50. I don't know if I'll be able to repeat that every day. Who? So, Kathy Corazon uh, thinks I should do a hundred swings in one set. Holy, holy jeepers. I don't know about that. Hey, good morning, Nate. Uh, thanks for saying hi. Uh, it's going to be a strange day today. I've been knocking off a chapter of easy strength almost every day lately. Almost done reading attempts. Enjoying it so far. Uh, so Mandar is enjoying my book. Um, here's the strength things, Amanda, about strength and conditioning books. Uh, it's going to sound weird, but we don't really have like, you know, like endings or twists at the end. Uh, this might shock you, but there's, I don't have any red herrings. There's, I'm not going to tell you at the end. Okay, I'll tell you. Darth Vader is Luke's father. We'll get some water. One thing I'll probably be doing with the 300 swings is, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, neat, I mean, it with, the, oh, hey, Susie's back. Hi, Susie. I like your post on danjohnuniversity.com. Thank you. So I could read your stuff. <clears throat> um, when I start doing the 300s, I'm going to be wearing a chest uh, monitor and doing the... Uh, <clears throat> it can't be. Well played. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, measuring that stuff again. But, you know, you certainly say, well, well, why did I waste those 20 those 20 days of information by not, you know, using the heart rate monitor and the magic iPod and all the all the information I get because with a challenge I, it, the challenge isn't physical it's up here <clears throat> and it's great to have all that heart rate data and you know my rest periods and all that and to watch my heart rate go this but that's that's heart rate information that's that kind of data I'm more interested in getting the swings done so Hi, folks, it's my wife. She's she's wearing pearls today, though she's not wearing Chuck Taylors, so. Hi, it's 
Sorry for interrupting. But, but hi. Thank you. All right. Uh, Coach Luke, thank you. Hello to those others who said hello. Uh, Coach Luke says, enjoying the ES for fat loss. Uh, yeah, it's a ES for fat loss. And that's going to be a real basis for the next book. So if you have good feedback on it, uh, get back to me, okay? Uh, I'd like to know. Um, it's a very simple template. And... <laughs> It seems to be doing really good work. Uh, I hope you're also doing the uh, the other things with it, uh, Luke. Uh, yesterday, I uh, uh, like, for example, the piece of fruit and the sauerkraut. So I went down to the store yesterday and I bought uh, two different kinds of kimchi uh, and sauerkraut. One small thing, Luke, I just kind of remember this. You can't, if you're not making your own sauerkraut, which is like the easiest thing in the world. I mean, I can probably do a show you in about a minute and a half but uh, any sauerkraut that sits on a shelf probably is something you don't want okay uh, uh sorry someone just asked to be on my live video who i have no idea his name is i'm not gonna tell it but i don't know why i don't know why people ask to be on my all it does is when their view requests come in they're so thick it shoots all the questions off so i can't see them which is too bad because i like to answer the questions um, I don't know who you are, so kimchi, sardines, and black coffee, Coach Luke. Coach Luke, I don't know if you're losing weight or not, but i got, I got to tell you one thing. Uh, you are probably keeping yourself from reproducing with that meal. Yeah, kimchi, sardines, and black coffee. God, is that is that sort of something you order on the first date, huh? Kimchi, sardines, and black coffee. And here's the interesting thing. You know, if you're at work and, and you bring... Uh, you know, some jars of kimchi or sauerkraut or, or bags or whatever. And, you know, you do pop open a, some sardines or herring. The one thing you don't have to worry about most places I've ever worked at, no one's going to steal your sardines. And if you put bagels out there, they'll be gone in 10 seconds. You know, <laughs> if you ever want to get rid of carbohydrates, just bring them to any office in the world. <laughs> oh, God. I think I write in one of my books about sitting next to one lady who was doing low carb and the other one was doing low fat. And then they bitched me out for my lunch, you know. Things never let go. And then we had this birthday party three hours later because the place I used to work they had to have a birthday party for everybody. Uh, and uh, watching these two women who had just given me lectures on low carb and low, low fat consume these pieces of cake. I mean, it's right out of office space. It was hilarious. Shout out, wild man. DJ. It's been a while since someone called me wild man. So you know about my past, huh? Hmm, interesting. Most people who know about my past aren't alive anymore. So Monk Hill, I'll be, uh, I'll be looking you up. So Coach Luke already reproduced. Yeah, well, we'll see. That meal. 
<laughs> Somebody wrote that sardines, kimchi, and coffee sound like a penance. Uh, hey, Dan, I did 100 swings the other day and legs still aching two days later. Uh, you did 100 swings and your legs are hurting? Well, just do that literally 100 times more, like with the X, and then you'll find out what the 10,000 swing challenge is like. Let's keep going. Too hard. Nice work. Okay. Uh, so I got to get 300 swings done in about half an hour. So I'm in good shape. So we're having a conversation here about how to eat sardines as a snack. Uh, one thing I've discovered is that, is it, let's see, I, I like sardines, I don't like herring. I think it's herring, no, anchovies. Anchovies are way too salty for me. <sighs> hey, from Beirut, hey, hi. My roommate was from Beirut. Uh, I traveled to Lebanon just one time. I just got over the border and it was an incident. But, uh, that, that, I, yeah, it's not important. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I know Lebanon just a little bit, but thank you. Uh, it's good to, it's good to have people from Beirut here today. Uh, Nate asked a question, what is, uh, what is fart look? Well, it's the Swedish term for speed play. And all it is is you go out there and you randomly decide to, hey, you yeah, I guess it would take a little experience, but say like uh, if you want an easy day, you would walk up the hills, maybe uh, sprint short flats, uh, uh, you know, take it easy some other places. It is an in, it's a very intuitive way of training uh, yourself. I actually kind of fart look when I do normally do my swings. Uh, I just I don't worry about you know the number. Uh, now that is something I, I will try to explain better. Hey, Kyle. Kyle's from uh, Denver. Got a lot of friends in Denver. Uh, you know, Josh Hillis, the great fat loss expert and a great and dear friend, very smart young man. Uh, my friend Anne, Anne Reese lives there, and uh, she is just a wonderful human being. I know a lot of other people there, too, but in our field, those would be the two I'd like you to look up. Uh, Josh Hillis, H-I-L-L-I-S, look him up. And then uh, go to my friends list and look up Lift, Lead, Lead, lift, love, and well, you'll just see a really good-looking woman, and her name is Anne. So that'll that'll help you out. One other thing that'll help you is Anne that um, can't hear; uh, she's deaf. And uh, so I, I actually practice my sign signing with her. I'm terrible at it, but I try, and that's really the key. Uh, it's not as bad as my; it's not nearly as bad as my Turkish or my Hebrew or my French. So I've had native like people in both in Hebrew and in Turkish, asked me not to speak anymore because my skills are so bad, even though I was fluent in Turkish on, on paper. You bet. Big fan. Oh, and someone from Berlin, huh? 
this is almost sounds like easy strength for speed. Am I misinterpreting it? Uh, Nate, I wouldn't say you're misinterpreting it. I, I can certainly see the parallels. And I kind of like where you're heading there, but it would take a fair, fairly disciplined athlete to become great. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's just say, let's, okay, Nate, let's say, Fartlek is easy strength for, uh, I wouldn't say speed, for endurance. Uh, it is based on how you feel, what you need. Of course, the key always is, you know, in tr the problem with track is does it work on the, on, 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 at the meet? And that's, boy, that's a tough one, isn't it? Everybody has really good ideas, but out of the pressure competition, that, that's how we go. In the furnace of competition. Reminder, I'll be doing a lot more than 10,000 swings because I forgot several times to start my camera. So, but that doesn't mean anything because I'm halfway through today, which means in just a few minutes, I'll say thank you. Okay. J.D. Halopka asks, Coach, is it okay to do a finishing move after each workout? I squat, bench, and clean Monday, Wednesday, Friday using heavy light medium. Well, I don't know what you mean, I mean my finishing move. I mean, what do you mean? Uh, if you're doing the one lift a day, no. If you're doing the transformation program, your finishing move should be your sport. If you do easy strength, sorry about those little noises. Uh, you should be doing your sport or going for a walk. Uh, just <clears throat> like a power bomb. Or, uh, what does that mean? Um, yeah, uh, I used to believe in finishers, but it doesn't fit the fractal that most people live their life through. I mean, it's fine if you're an athlete. Like, for example, for throwers, it's always last throw, best throw, because that's what you want, the Nationals or the Worlds or the Olympics. <clears throat> so you always want to finish here. But I like, if you do something diff difficult in a typical uh, person's workout, and everybody else, uh, general population, I think the hard part of the workout should be in the middle so that you have time to... Um, so I think you should start by doing like prone exercises, move up to half kneeling, uh, presses, maybe some you know, uh, half kneeling work, uh, half kneeling poles and whatever and then work up to that middle part where the hard workout is the humane burpee the whatever and then uh, so that's the hard work and then do mobility work after that maybe a little bit more uh, something like st strength low end strength you know three sets of three and something and then get back on the ground and you know do some original strength so yeah maybe original strength to start the workout half kneeling pulling pressing uh, maybe Turkish get-ups. Uh, the, the middle part of the workout is the hard part. That's that's the, that's the fractal I use for uh, normal populations.
So, got a haircut while we're doing all this, and I, and I, and I think the haircut doesn't work for swings. It, I'll have to figure something out. You know, I spend a lot of time, you know, worrying about how I look, as many of you can pro probably care by what I wear and how much time I spend. How many ten thousand swing challenges have you done yourself up to? I've noticed you have a difference. Oh yeah. So Chris wants to know how many. I, like I said, I think this is either sixth or seventh actual 10,000 swing challenges, not just coming in for a week and practicing an idea. You know, someone will say, I did this, what do you think? You know, I'll do it for 2,000, 2,500 swings just to see. Sometimes, like, that's the stupidest idea I ever saw in my life, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've noticed differences. Uh, yeah, now that I know what I'm doing, it's not so hard. Um, Okay, out of nowhere, Peter says, any tips for getting better at the lockout and the push press? The last three winches, yeah, why don't you read my work? Look up Dick Notmeyer and press outs. Dick Notmeyer, N-O-T-M-E-Y-E-R, press outs. It's in every, I think it's in every book, but if you go to danjohn.net, pull out that free 50-something page book called From the Ground Up, and I have some stuff in there called press outs. Try that. If you got issues, man, you know I have issues uh, with my with my lockout because of this. Really, kind of you can't see anymore. But there's in a, an American football game, I lost uh, five pieces off my left elbow, and we didn't get them out for a long time. So for a long time, that and that's the so to me that's to me that's straight. Well, actually, that's straight to me, and that's hyperextended to me. So people when they watch me press, they say you're not locking out. Like, well, what do you want? Oh, you got to that well when I do that that puts a ton of pressure right here and I always worry about losing it out the other end uh, so yeah so danjohn.net from the ground up let's get to Pat Flynn's 300 uh, starting tomorrow that will be what I'm doing fun sometimes to look at my old journals. Here, this is just last year. Huh. Let's see what I was doing on the tw I don't know what I was doing last year. Last year at this time, we were doing a lot of complexes. Okay, it's 300, 200 to go. That's great. Ah, it's a quick turn off. Okay, 200 and got 18 minutes. Boy, I'm breathing hard today. Part of it is that I keep the heater down, way down here, but boy. Uh, so we have a question from Zach, do you always do you, do you always set a record or get closer to being your previous time previous week today? No, no. Okay. Yeah, he's a lot of people race the clock in the ten thousand swing challenge, and that is something we recommended in the first couple of times. And then I realized that most people's swing technique to say it sucks is 
is high praise. Uh, most people swing just so poorly. It's it's embarrassing to watch. And I, so racing with poor swing technique is just stupid. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I, I, he, the, the point is made is that, uh, the, the workouts are starting to, you know, well, I call that accumulation and it's one of the most important things I use in my coaching is that things build on each other. Well, in the 10,000 swing challenge, what's happening is that the exhaustion from day one, you know, it's weird. I haven't had a chance to recover from the first day yet in a, in a, in a weird sense, because I'm doing 20 straight days in a row. You'll notice some days that my hips don't even loosen up for a while. Uh, accumulation by far is the most, uh, uh, it's weird because it's the least nuanced concept I work with, but it's sometimes most difficult to understand. You know, parents who want their damn kid to be specialized in a sport. Um, we know this, that if you're not world-class in three years upon specialization, you're never going to be. Like if your kid's a chess prodigy at age six and, you know, a grand master and all that, yeah, I get it. Uh, you have a strange kid, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's very few sports uh, activities that reward early specialization. And then here's the list. Chess, golf, classical instruments, and everything else. Uh, and because each one of those has absolutely like, I know when you play the wrong note in a violin. I don't know jack about music, but I can hear it. And you know in chess when you screw up because you lose. You are you put your, get yourself put in a terrible position. Um, with golf, there's instant feedback on a putt. I mean, you know. So most parents, and, and I feel for them because they <clears throat> most parents think somehow that they can put their kid, uh, that they can make their kid a great athlete. The truth is you can't. Because there's always going to be a guy like little Danny John, youngest of six, youngest kid in his class, hasn't hit puberty yet, trains five times as hard as your, your spoiled little rich kid. And when it comes time to get in that, that lunch bag, you know, you're going to have to fight me off. Well, be very serious, actually. So early specialization, um, when the rest of us show up to play, uh, one of my favorite stories, I won't say the kid's name, but it's what got Paul Northway to be a discus thrower. He shows up to me one day in the eighth grade and goes, how far is blank number of feet? And, I, and the discus, I go, not very far at all. Well, X is bragging about being the state discus champion for, you know, 12-year-olds. And I'm like, well, okay. So I showed Paul how to turn, and, uh, you know, I told him I wouldn't work with him until he threw. Uh, he was a badass court. Um I wouldn't work with him again until he threw the discus turn, full turn throws a thousand times and read 75 pages of stuff I gave him. This is no joke. Three days later, I get a phone call and he says, okay, did the throws, read the stuff. Now what? I thought, well, that's why Paul became one of the greatest discus throwers in, in American history <laughs> uh, because he, uh, he didn't have all the advantages. He didn't, he didn't win the under 12 state championship, but he won the real ones many, many times. So, so accumulation is, well, here's the funny thing. Both of Paul's parents were musicians, and he played the trumpet. He had the discipline from music to carry over into his discus throwing. He had the ability to go out by himself and uh, do something oh, hours on end. And those are things you can't force feed somebody. You know, those, that, those are, that's a skill set that uh, is uh, very difficult to, to achieve. Kind of like doing 10,000 kettlebell swings in front of two cameras. Only an idiot would do it. And, I'm, and I am the idol of idiot worshippers. Shakespeare. The idol of idiot worshippers. Write that down. Okay, so according to my journal, uh, I could do this in four sets. We'll see. But I'll need to rest.
work. Ah. 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 You bet, Zach. Glad I could help you. So after accumulation, then of course, the word I use, I use the phrase AIT, not advanced infantry training for those of you from the Vietnam era, but so accumulation, then there's intensification. And that's when you you toss out a lot of stuff and you get really good at a few things. Uh, but it has to be done in those steps. You know, I have made that mistake with in my past where a kid says, I want to be a discus thrower and we slide them right up and, you know, I come up this <laughs> you know, year round plan. And it never works uh, until, until they're serious. Um, you know, John Powell, uh, Tommy Kono, both Yuri Sadiq, Yuri Sadiq, um, all real clear on what makes a, a, a world-class athlete, you know, Uh, Dinesh, is this the place where I record it? Yeah, right. Yeah, when you guys, when you, you listen to my podcast, uh, I have the I have the camera set about here, right? Maybe about there, and I'm sitting in this chair, I'm sitting in that chair right there. Yeah, yeah. So those are some of my, some of my I showed this yesterday, but these are these are all the strength and health magazines and. These are mostly Dragon Door books. Uh, these are my books in translation. Um, these are my hot list of books. Um, I have this because somebody asked a question from it. There's uh, Pat Flynn's Paleo for Dummies. I'm reading Derek's uh, Derek Sivers' Hell, Hell Yeah or No, Exercise by Lieberman, and then this one here, Sinclair's on on longevity, which I really lifespan, which I really think is quite good. Um, I'm going. I'm doing some odd little things. Well, thanks for liking. Uh, uh, somebody just mentioned how much they like. Can you go? Well, thank you. Uh, honestly, I think if I, I think uh, I, I think one day I'll put together an entire workshop where I show you how I go through the whole process from can you go to now what with everybody. Uh, in a sense, I guess I do that with you know some of the stuff, but. I have a very uh, spreadsheet brain. Uh, it, it's very, it works very well with if then. And you'll notice the, the Mac fit group that uh, that's when you read it, you can you can easily put that into an algorithm or a spreadsheet. And that the fact that it's what we have on Dan John University is you, everything's just based on if then. Okay, let's get up to four. Whoa. I'm gonna have to bust these out, damn it. I slowed down too much answering questions. But Sorry, when people call, it stops everything. Okay, that means I've got, oh, 
I gotta knock these out real fast. Uh, eh, not real fast. I don't think. I got about 10 minutes to do 100. Yeah, Dinesh asks how to increase overhead press numbers. Dinesh, I have a whole bunch of videos on that. The truth is, you know, you got to press overhead, and that's the biggest mistake people make. The best success I ever had was just two days a week. One day a week, I did three sets of eight in the clean and press. Obviously, I did a lot of other shit, too. Uh, with one minute rest, I think I got up to 135 for three sets of eight with a minute. But somebody commented on the video. person was not very bright. Uh, when you do three sets of eight with a minute rest, the accumulation of those other 16 reps kills that last set. And then the other day of the week on Friday, I would just do clean and press singles and all the way up. And that's when I pressed uh, overhead, I pressed 300 pounds or if you know kilos, it'd be uh, 138 uh, for just a single. But I think when you weigh about 220 and you clean and press strictly 300, when you weigh 100 kilos and you press 138 strictly, that you might want to call that strong. Now, that's in the real world. That's not internet strength. Uh, on the internet, I did uh, a thousand pound clean and press. I've commented many times about going to these gatherings and meeting this the biggest blowhards on the internet in real life. <laughs> Be like, bro, do you even lift? <laughs> you might think that when you look at me. Okay, um, had a real good job. Did a real good job writing a new chapter yesterday in Easy Strength, the new uh, edition of Easy Strength. Uh, it's kind of fun to knock some of this stuff out. Uh, I still think the whole book, Easy Strength, should be just a single paragraph, but no offense to y'all, but y'all can't follow directions. Sorry. I lost count. I think it was 50 or 60. I only counted as 50, but my wrist was going out. So, 50 to go. And then I'll go watch the inauguration. Well, I gotta work out too. So, that's great. That's great news. Only 50 to go. Ah, uh, what do you got here? So, Aunt Chicam, a man or official, you're not asked, how many sets are you breaking those 1,000 into? Well, it's not 1,000. It's 500 a day for 20 days, which makes it 10,000. So you got 10% of the answer right, or you, you went two times more than you should. So these last two days, I've been doing 10 sets of 50, which I wouldn't have believed on the first day. On the first day, I was struggling to get 30, 35 reps. In fact, I don't think, I mean, I could easily look it up, but I'm not going to, because that's all the way over there. Uh, yeah, I guess 30 reps when I first started were tough. Now, now I can do 10 sets of 50. So the things you get out of the 10,000 swing challenge, um, which aren't apparent when you first try it, is that your grip strength goes through the roof. Uh, 
your, uh, I think my hip flexors really come around with mobility and flexibility. Uh, your butt becomes a rock. I mean, it's, it's freakish how hard uh, it is. Uh, and that's, that's, I gotta tell you, man, uh, I should do these on a phone, I'm telling you. It looks good. I'd have to, I'd have to manscape a little, I guess. Enjoy that image. Okay, so I have one more set, and um, that will finish the 10,000 swing challenge, and I'm very proud of it. Thanks, Baja Life. Well, heck, you know, down there in Baja Life, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I'll do the, I'll do them next time. And what do they call them? A banana hammock. <laughs> I crack myself up. No one else thinks it's funny, but I, wow. It's uh, and then tomorrow I'll start doing the, uh, the 300 swings and I'll keep, uh, I'll probably keep doing them, um, on Instagram live. And uh, yeah, Susie, but I'm not finished yet. I got 500 to go. Actually, I don't. I'm, pardon me. I have 50 to go. I am technically I'm done. I've done the 10,000, but I, I I want them all on uh, video for YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Baja Life is talking about doing loaded carries up hills. Yeah. No question about that. Okay. Let's see if I can pull off this one last set. I'll have people showing up literally any minute from now, so I gotta, I gotta bounce. Uh, as always, it's, uh, I really enjoy working uh, in this field. I'm very proud of what I do. Uh, when I get frustrated with the questions on Instagram, don't take it personally. Just, you know, it's that lack of uh, people <laughs> looking up the simple answers. Uh, my nephew, Michael, is putting together a, um, a nice, uh, FAQ for all this. Let's hope that goes well. Okay, let's do this. Oh. <laughs> oh. 10,000, 10,000 swings, and I have swung to, oh, nice work, good job Danny, 10,000 swings, for those of you who know anything about me, I plan the 10,000 swing challenge to correspond today with the inauguration of President Biden. Uh, I thank you, Ricard. Uh, so there we go. Uh, so that finishes it. Uh, next week I'll be doing a couple things for my community. Uh, donating blood and a few other things. I'm also getting my dental exam next week. Why I plan my dental exam with my Power Red donation, that's a double unit. Hey, Gernot, good morning. So I just finished. So uh, starting tomorrow, I'll be 300 swings. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm, I'm, there's a group of people who want to try to organize a time. Um, if somebody wants to maybe make a thread at Dan John University to agree on a time, you know, I'd roll out of bed every day. Not, not, not Sundays, and maybe not even Saturday. But I'd roll out of bed most days to, to swing with y'all, uh, if that helps. I won't be doing, uh, it would be weird to keep doing the 50s, uh, 
be kind of interesting to break, get, get, see if I can sneak up into the 60s and just do like five sets of 60. That would be a, that would be a grip test. Uh, thank you again, YouTubers. Remember, if you have questions, uh, podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. Remember, all my stuff for free forever, uh, danjohn.net. I've got a bunch of free books and PDFs. You take it, don't print it off. Your printer won't last. Uh, it's thousands of pages, three plus thousand pages of, of free information. And then, of course, danjohnuniversity.com. Uh, that's our, and now that's got the workout generator. And um, I'm going to go out now and go work out, which doesn't sound like a great idea, but that's what I'm going to go do. Hey, talk to you soon. Thank you, YouTubers. See you soon.